putting up new buildings and structures and so forth, that there's another conversation that really hasn't taken place, and that's kind of what, what did JC really mean when he started the school, and, and how did that impact people who attended? And so, so Steve and I felt that there was an opportunity to create a forum, a very cold uh, site, and uh, hopefully there'll be other alumni that maybe are not so interested in, in the strictly strict, uh, you know, bricks and mortar part of what Eglon is doing, but, but, but more interested in the kind of the founder's philosophy and so forth. I, I think there's another conversation that just has not taken place, and that is, you know, the many, many alumni that I've spoken to, and, and I'm sure you, you know, the other people online as well, um, you know, that, that are really interested in terms of what Colette started and what he meant in, 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 in his program, and um, I, I just think there's an opportunity for, for um, another conversation. Uh, and to your point, John, you know, what, what you know, what kind of got off the track maybe in the 80s. I think there were some economic pressures and, and some people who said, oh, well, let's, uh, you know, uh, let's update the vision, that, that kind of approach, which, um, as we all know, Corlett's vision was not like, you know, it's hot and it's in and it's trendy. It's, it, it was more kind of, you know, for going from the early days uh, in, in, into the future, you know, the, the, what he believed was, was was intended to be a constant, uh, yes. not, not I, just I a temporary. I concur with you on that, and uh, I, I still consider myself a happy recipient of all of this here, and, and use it as a base for a lot of interaction with multiple people, my children included, but even outside of that. Uh, in terms of guiding other people uh, with respect to their activities. And I think it is a valuable one, and I don't think it is an evolution of Kurt Hahn's vision. Uh, I think it is a separate implementation process that, yes, maybe Corlett did work at Gordonston, and Kurt Hahn came from Zalem. I know Zalem very well because I used to go to ski meets all the time, uh, all the time there, and we used to have conversations about this. Remember, I'm fluent in German. We used to have conversations about the huge differences between our school, uh, and I did not have much interaction with the Gordons of people, but I know that their setup is very much uh, uh, locked into the British system. Uh, and I, uh, I know as a personal matter, that my father would have never sent me to Aegon had it been a Zalem or a Gordon. Um, it's just a completely different setup. Very interesting, John. I, w I wasn't aware of your, your uh, familiarity with those two schools, and, and that's something that as I've kind of just Googled and done a little research on, on their websites and so forth, uh, sense that, that these were all very unique individuals that all had their own very specific uh, ideas, um, and, well, and wanna, what I you're saying just tends to reinforce that. I, I have three Americans on here, remember? Uh, for me, English, it was a new language, as I, I had just learned it when I arrived at Aglon, um, and it was brand new to me. Uh, I, I've Americanized since then, but remember, my culture and my background is German or French. I mean, those are my mother tongues. Uh, as a continental European, uh, it, it was impossible to send me uh, to England, which had its own activities then, and Germany was still suffering under, um, under the post-war syndrome uh, in terms of how it was allowed to think even. Uh, uh, that is why I ended up in Aglon, which were JC right from the beginning. He was inclusive of everybody and wasn't damning to everybody. Now, it's true. I always remember his remark how he said that Aglon was a Christian school that also accepted Catholics and Jews. Uh, I always found that very odd uh, in his presentation uh, because I, I never felt that a Catholic was not a Christian, and I'm the only Catholic, I think, amongst the three of you. Um, but it, it's... It's, these are the realities that we were dealing with, but it was it was fun. It was still inclusive, and that is not what I feel uh, in terms of what was happening at Zalem and Gordonston. So 
what do you see the society as, as I mean, it's, it's good to talk about these things, but I mean, what, what in, how do you see the society manifesting whatever? I mean, the JT vision, if you will, do you just put it out in documents? Do you see, I don't know, affecting egg loan policy or do you see the policies being put forth someplace else? I mean, where yeah, is this going? Come on. You're trying to get fight. I'd like to, can I try an answer on that? Yep. So I have I have my own thoughts, but I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, keeping my mouth shut because I, I I think it's important for for a lot of different voices to to speak out on this. Okay, I've not had a single discussion on this here, uh, but uh, the the way and I'm just sort of stepping in on the sideline, listening to what Steve was trying to start off in terms of comments, uh, and I I did see uh, myself highlighting certain characteristics of what. I remembered in terms of the Corlett experience. Um, I, I think the JC or the John Corlett Society uh, has to remain, at the end of the day, independent and above whatever it is that Aglon okay. is. It is the, the reason role is you have to that JC had envisioned in terms of the implementation role for the not for profit foundation. But since the not for profit foundation was Bingo. never funded with the assets of the school as it was meant to be funded, uh, it now means that that, in, that role of implementation and continuation of that vision uh, has to remove itself from outside of the influence of Aglon if it is going to continue to remain true to its spirit. That's okay, so the independent. So what would it do though? Would it, I mean, would it send like ghetto kids on ski holidays? Uh, would it uh, what? would it put out uh, like I said documents or you know guidelines? Kind of be well. I I, uh, I think in a similar manner as uh, Zalem, you know, created its rules. Um, uh, we have the advantage of looking backwards uh, and thinking back on our experience. And uh, our, our initial role, I think, would be to somehow uh, verbalize or memorialize what JC was, was really attempting to do, because we've got a guy here who didn't write anything down for all intents and purposes. He worked it through, he was not familiar with governance. Uh, requirements for all of that and as a result it's really only the recipient uh, or the student body uh, and the administrators who were in charge of it back then uh, that have any inkling of what this year really was about and I, I think the, the whole vision was good in terms of the development of the mind and the body and all of that but the whole implementation process is what was unique to Aglon, and it is not duplicated in either Zalem or Gordon or any of the other round square schools as I remember them. Right. So, if you're, so what you're talking about here then is some documentation. Now, next question would be, okay, so are we looking at maybe something like recording what it was? Are we doing maybe something along, excuse my IT background, but are we doing something along the lines of, say, an open standard where we... Great. Okay. Well, this is this is this is a JC vision calling. You know. Well, I, I think it it requires. Okay. All it, yeah. If I can chime in for a minute, because because I think George, you you you're making some good points, which is kind of what what what's the impact at the end of the day, or, or what can the group or society help to to accomplish? And I think taking from what John's saying is that in the absence of a lot of um, kind of written material from from JC, that it's given Aegon specifically the option to say, oh well, it's just being the interpreted. Yeah, you know, it's an interpretation of what JC thought because he never really was specific in terms of what he wanted to do. So we think it means this, or we think it means that. What what I find really interesting is when uh, just hearing John speak about his experience and some of the background that I see with that. It's all, that I think it's important to try to archive, in a sense, as as much as we can while we can from. You know, former staff members like Christopher Reynolds, uh, Duncan Maxwell, and others, uh, who I think 
uh, in conversation with JC, had some unique insight into terms of, you know, what what he really thought, what he was trying to get at, how he he uh, manifested some of his um, ideas and beliefs. So I think there's there's one part that says uh, there's an opportunity for us to make sure that that we get as much of this down in print or at least recorded as we can. I think the other thing um, is that there are various. Um, alumni and former staff members who are attempting to uh, go out and, and, and um, you know, replicate in some way or another what, what their belief was in terms of JC and the Eglon tradition. So whether it's Jonathan Long in India who started a school um, based on some of the fundamental beliefs of Eglon, or, or Ben Udy, who I haven't spoken to at any length about this, but, but I know he's, he's an educator uh, and, and I'm sure has adopted some of, of, of his experience from, from Eglon. Um, but to try to um, collect and conserve, and, and of course, uh, Will Sutherland as well, who, who, who was, says, uh, and, and I believe, profoundly influenced by, by his experience at Eglon, that, um, you know, it, it's, it's certainly part of Eglon, and hopefully uh, going forward, Eglon may or may not. I know Richard McDonald has, has uh, um, said that, that, that he you know, sincerely believes in, in, in a lot of what J.C. Um, you know, said and when he created the, the school and so forth. But also professors to say you know, there wasn't a lot of written material to, to, um, you know, to follow. Um, so I think so. I think it's important that people who, who either knew JC or was at school during the time that, that his influence was was dominant, uh, you know, kind of share and archive a lot of the material with the hope that this becomes a, a resource uh, both for the board of governors, many of whom uh, were not familiar with JC, did not have that experience, um, and and also some of these. Um, you know, faculty members and alumni uh, that want to go out and, and um, you know, base their educational approach on, on some of JC's uh, beliefs. If I can chime in for a minute, because I think, George, you're, you're, you're making some good points, which is kind of what, what, what's the impact at the end of the day, or, or what can the group or society help to, to accomplish? And I think taking from what John's saying is that in the absence of a lot of um, kind of written material from, from JC, that it's given Agon specifically the option to say, oh, well, it's just being during the interpreted. You know, it's an interpretation of what J.C. thought because he never really was specific in terms of what he wanted to do. So we think it means this or we think it means that. What, what I find really interesting is when, uh, just hearing John speak about his experience and some of the background that I'm asking you with, that, it's all, that I think it's important to try to archive, in, in a sense, as, as much as we can, while we can, from... You know, former staff members, say like Christopher Reynolds, uh, Duncan Maxwell, and others, uh, who I think, uh, in conversation with JC, had some unique insight into terms of, you know, what what he really thought, what he was trying to get at, how he he uh, manifested some of his um, ideas and beliefs. So I think there's there's one part that says. Uh, there's an opportunity for us to make sure that, that we get as much of this down in print or at least reported as we can. I think the other thing um, is that there are various um, alumni and former staff members who are attempting to uh, go out and, and, and um, you know, replicate in some way or another what what their belief was in terms of JC and the Eglon tradition. So whether it's Jonathan Long in India who started the school um, based on some of the fundamental beliefs of Eglon, or or Ben Udy who I haven't spoken to at any length about this, but but I know he's he's an educator uh, and and I'm sure has adopted some of of, of his experience from from Eglon. Um, but to try to um, collect and conserve, and, and of course, uh, Will Sutherland as well, who, who, who was, says, uh, and, and I believe, profoundly influenced by, by his experience at Eglon, that, um, you know, it, it's, 
it's certainly part of Eglon, and hopefully uh, going forward, Eglon may or may not. I know Richard McDonald has has uh, um, said that, that that he, you know, sincerely believes in in, in a lot of what JC, um, you know, said and when he created the, the school and so forth. But also professors to say, you know, there wasn't a lot of written material to to um, you know to follow. Um, so I think so. I think it's important that people who, who either knew JC or was at school during the time that, that his influence was was dominant, uh, you know, kind of share and archive a lot of material with the hope that this becomes a, a resource uh, both for the board of governors, many of whom. Uh, were not familiar with JC, did not have that experience, um, and and also some of these um, you know faculty members and alumni uh, that want to go out and and um, you know base their educational approach on on some of JC's uh, beliefs. That's right. I, I concur with that. Well, I will say that these efforts. As far as in, as oral histories, as informal though they be, if, it's, if you really want to try and capture JC, you know the people who knew him are old. Yeah, the first order of business would be to go about trying to interview as many people as possible and try and capture as much as that, you know, get it written down somewhere. I agree because it was Joyce Brown good in that. Joy, Joyce Lowe, is, George, is, is are you alive? So I'm online, yeah. yeah. Hi, Raymond. Just so you know. I've just been listening. Right. <laughs> Joy, Joyce Lowe is alive and well and apparently sharp as a tack and, and has uh, great, um, you know, some, some great stories and, and memories uh, that that I, I think some have been recorded, some I believe are in print, um, but but the, the starting several years ago, you know, the, the, when I was particularly active with FOAC US and, and John Warner was also on the board at that time, you know, we uh, really advocated hard to archive and, and just maintain a lot of the early um, documents, uh, photographs, and so forth of the school, which at the time we were told were basically um, you know, just just disintegrating through not, not it's just neglect. They're just like piled up in firing cabinets, what have you. I, I don't think the school has, has really uh, made any progress on, on that, but I, but I think to your point, George, yeah, while these people are, are still you know, alive and ticking and remember, uh, would would be a great opportunity to try to collect and, and curate as much as we can, um, because that's going to be an important uh, kind of piece of history going forward. Yeah, I mean, Steve's been doing that informally, but you know, maybe I don't know if it's a formal effort or if there's money for this, but to interview people, I mean. Well, I, I think I, I think more importantly, and I just after not seeing her for 36 years, I just ran into Connie uh, Curran. <laughs> she is a curator at the Metropolitan Museum at this stage. Uh, she has had no contact with Aglon during all this time. Feels completely disassociated. Uh, and you know, I started to ask her why, blah blah blah. But real important is. She's got curatorial experience in terms of providing an architectural framework which can help guide Steve's rather ad hoc uh, administration uh, of this year, which could become very useful if she would have the time. But you know, she doesn't have much time because she's coming out with a show in two years, and I know that that takes 365, 24-7. Well, Steve's not, doesn't seem to be here right now, so let's give him a whole bunch of deliverables. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Great. Well, let's, he's recording. He's recording this conversation. So let's think of all the things that he needs to do. <laughs> Oral history effort. I mean, I know he's thrown stuff up on a web page, but uh, you know. Oh, this is totally um, for our own use. I'm not going to put any of this on the web page. No, but it, uh, the, 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 yeah. the, the lines in terms of what tasks need to be done, uh, I think it is a question of interviewing and recording uh, and then 
transcribing uh, a lot of this uh, material that you, could, you, Steve, could pick up from Joyce Lowe, um, Mrs. Hopkins, uh, even uh, uh, Sutherland and Ben Udi and, and uh, all these people. Uh, I, I think you, you gotta you gotta first take the raw material, but really you gotta talk to somebody who knows what the hell they're doing here. And that's not me. But I think it's raw material, and then from that you start transcribing it to pull out the essence. Conceptions are. And it, the whole purpose is just to capture what people thought, and there will be different views of what the legacy is. And then... Well, here's an idea. We, we are not connected. Okay, go ahead, George. This is just off the top of my head brainstorming kind of idea. But Steve, why not put together 10 principles? And I just choose the number 10. Okay. Just arbitrarily say, okay. You know, seven. Seven principles from the existing material you had. Maybe go out and talk to some more people of what you think are the essential principles of of, of the Corlectian way, or whatever you want to call it. You know, and then let's put them out there to you know to the people who knew them or who are interested in this sort of thing to ratify and see if if, if, if these if we've captured it or not. And I, I think that's a good jo idea, George. And I think the next stage is to say each person is responsible for right, ratifying. There is no central organization. This is the brilliance of Noel's concept, is that there is no hierarchy. There's no chain. There's only sharing of information. And there will be bad information that gets shared. But then that's where comments are. I, I agree completely. It, it's, it's just starting point right. and actually it's kind of based on the idea that statistically you know the more people that are answering a question you know the majority tend to get it right yeah the wikipedia I'm model I, I don't, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not i'm not i don't buy into that but I, I i specifically threw in with seven principles because there are many i work very hard on uh getting concepts captured in seven principles nothing that are here and i can tell you that in a very simple business transaction, that can take weeks and months of work uh, in a simple business transaction. In this particular scenario, I can see that it, it'll, be, it'll be more involved. Sure. And there will be a heavy fan. But, uh, you know, that's, that's fine. I just, like I said, I was just throwing it out there as maybe just a starting point, something that'll, because we're, we're talking vagaries, so at least that would give us something solid that, okay, this is what we're talking about. George, you're thinking right on because David Rhodes mentioned the same thing and came up with an exercise. Can I send you a copy of that exercise? Sure. Because essentially what he asks is, look at the JC speech and identify one or two paragraphs that are essential and then write why it's essential, perhaps change the language to make it modern, and then um, that will be shared. Um, Noel has gone through this, and so has John Vornley. Uh, both of some homework, Steve. Oh, it's homework. That's right. Yeah, it's it's, it's a very interesting uh, exercise. I, I I think what's what's really interesting when you read this uh, 1973 address to graduates, it's as close as I've ever seen to a document that kind of encapsulates what what JC was was thinking and and uh, trying to to uh, to convey